Texas wins this game 52 to nothing. Guys, I was thoroughly impressed with the defense. We will talk about that. And, of course, the offensive side of the ball. Um, actually, let's just jump into it. So, Texas, we're just going to talk about the offense right now. 52 to nothing versus Colorado State. So, offensively for Texas, I wanted to see efficiency in the running and passing game. I said Quinn Ewers versus this secondary, which is not very good. We discussed that in the preview show. I'm here Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, breaking it down. Now, next week, I will be here 7 p.m. Or sorry, I will be here Tuesday and Thursday talking Michigan of next week. So no Monday show, Tuesday and Thursday with Michigan. We have a call-in show Thursday too. So again, like and subscribe. Um, but overall, very impressed with the defense. But again, let's talk the offense first. Quinn Ewers, 74% completion percentage. I said I needed to see at least 68% versus a very bad Colorado State secondary. He delivered 20 of 27, over 300 yards passing, and 13 yards per, compl or per attempt. Um, that that's very impressive for Quinn Ewers or sorry. Yeah. Per completion. That's very impressive. Uh, 20 to 27, 260 yards, three touchdown and one interception. Now let's talk about that interception. We talked about Quinn's ability sometimes to read a de defense and it can be questionable. And I think I said it, that was a comment we got in the preview show. And I agree that agreed with that to a certain extent, but what I really believe is, it's about confidence with Quinn. And right there was a perfect example. He steps up in the pocket, which he didn't used to do. Great job with that. He looks like he's about to unleash the trigger. He has Amari Nyblak running over the middle. Instead, he takes too long. And then when he decides to throw it, it gets tipped and intercepted. If he has the confidence to step up and fire with accuracy like he does most of the time, he's an accurate quarterback. That's a completion. Might be a touchdown. Come on, Amari Nyblak is very athletic at the tight end position. If he breaks a uh, tackle, it's going to be a touchdown there. So that's something from Quinn I need to see more of. That's the only bad decision he made the whole game. Everything else was beautiful. He had an unreal no-look pass, which in real time, I was like the only one to catch that apparently because the announcers didn't seem thrilled about it. When I saw it, I was like, holy crap. I, I jumped out of my chair. I was like, wow, that's a hell of a throw by Quinn. Um, so Matthew Golden, who had two touchdowns on the day as well. People... Are gonna, now it's going to happen. People are going to jump on this Matthew Golden train. Go back to two or three months ago. I was telling people he was the second best wide receiver on this team. I was trying to tell you. I watched him at Houston. He did not have the quarterback at Houston. He didn't have the other skilled players around him at Houston. This guy's a legit NFL wide receiver. He's a very good player. And you're going to see this. I think he's going to have eight, ten, eight to ten touchdowns this year for this Texas team. I really believe that. He's very, very good. He's tough. He's got good hands, good route running. He's honestly a complete overall wide receiver. He's like a B overall wide receiver. And I will take that every day of the week. Um, so really impressive by him. It was pretty cool seeing Isaiah Bond mid routes fix his helmet and catch a touchdown. Absolutely filthy route. Uh, the defender face got a little bit of face mask. He fixes it, runs the corner out to the end zone touchdown. Beautiful pass by Quinn there. And then the other touchdown to Matthew Golden that wasn't the no look. I agree with the guy. Colorado State guys like this, and Quinn just puts it right over his right shoulder into Matthew Golden's hands. Beautiful pass by Quinn Ewers. Again, it was just the one mistake by him, but overall really good um, from him and the guys in the wide receiving. And a Gunner Helm came in with a couple catches for as well, I believe a big 37-yarder um, on one of those drives. So overall, very good there. Now, let's talk about the offensive line because I did see some things. Again, it's hard to tell watching first time through about the offensive line. So I'll go back and watch. And on when we talk about the preview show with the Michigan boys, I'll break that down a little bit further. Obviously, I'll use my own eyes. I'll use other people's grading skills. PFF, I think, does an okay job. Alex Dun Dunlap from Orange Bloods does a pretty good job, too. So I'm going to check out the grades. I'm going to use my own eyes. From what I saw just off of first glance, Cole Hudson, to me, seemed to be a better guard in this game than both Hayden Connor and DJ Campbell. That's just what I saw on TV. Again, when I go back and watch this and slow it down and actually focus in on the guard and center position, um, I'll be able to tell. But to me, Cole Hudson looked like the best guard we have on the team. And then it's probably DJ Campbell and then Hayden Connor, but those two are very close. But just right off the bat, I think Cole Hudson is our best guard. Jake Majors, my dude, we, what did we say in the preview? Or what did I say in the preview? No, I don't want to see any snap infractions. What did I see immediately from Jake Majors? Two snap infractions by Jake Majors. You are a fifth-year senior, my brother. You are a fifth-year se senior. You cannot be having snap infractions. That is two. Two too many. It's enough. That's it. That's, a, that's your two for the year. You shouldn't even have had those two. That's ridiculous for a fifth-year center to be having those. Um, but 
Overall, I can't complain too much. They did a pretty good job in the passing game. I think Quinn only got sacked once, and there was only a couple pressures. But he had, for the most part, all day to throw to his weapons. Um, but overall, like I said, I'll take another sneak peek and look at the inside of the offensive line. The outside was fantastic. Cam Williams did Kelvin Banks, small people in the run game pretty well, and then also did fantastic in the passing game. It's the interior that I worry about. I don't worry about Jake Majors when the play is happening. I worry about it beforehand, like we saw with the snap infractions. And then – in the running game, DJ Campbell, Hayden Connor have to be better. Cole Hudson, I thought, was pretty good. We'll have to go back and look, like I said. But overall, not too bad for the first um, or the first game of the year for the Texas offensive line. Obviously, the biggest jump you will have, guys, is from week one to week two throughout your whole team. So I expect a pretty big jump going next week into Michigan. And I also believe, just like they did versus Rice last year before the Alabama game, that this team probably wasn't you know, preparing that much for Colorado State. So that's what makes this impressive. You're not preparing that much for Colorado State, and you would still go out there, execute, win 52 to nothing. Um, overall, fantastic performance. I, I, I'm nitpicking at this point, guys. I really am on the offensive side of the ball. Other than the two snap infractions, really good job. And other than the Quinn Ewers, just needs to be more confident there and step up and deliver the ball instead of second-guessing himself. Fantastic job. I really can't complain. Really good job by the offense. Um, overall, not much to say, guys. Uh, Ryan Niblett got a couple carries, too, so I thought that was smart by Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, I would like to see him used a little bit more in the offense because he's got good speed. He can play in the backfield. Look at his high school tape. He can play running back. He can play wide receiver. So, overall, I think use him a little bit more. Use Silas Bolden a little bit more. And maybe Sark was keeping him um, you know, healthy for the Michigan game, but we'll see. But it's pretty clear to me that it will be Isaiah Bond, Matthew Golden, and then find a third, another third guy to step up in a bigger role. But those two guys are studs. They'll be fine. Uh, and then we're going to rotate the other four in as need be and figure out their roles. Jonte Cook had a couple catches in this game as well. He had a big one, which Arch Manning came in. Ryan Wingle was actually the leading wide receiver at the end of the game, four receptions, 70 yards. Uh, at the end of the year, I think you'll see him getting more reps. But right now, I just don't think he's 100% ready. Gunner Helm, like I said, two receptions, 42 yards. And I got to say this. I don't know if this guy's watching, listening, but I got a comment. When I said Gunnar Helm will lead the teams in, in snaps, and someone said, well, Amari Nyblack will be more productive. Guys, if I think someone will lead the team in snaps, I think the production will be about equal, most likely, because that room is talented and because Gunnar Helm is a better blocker. That's what I said to that guy. And guess what, guys? Gunnar Helm still had better stats. Two receptions, 42 yards. Amari Nyblack, one reception, seven yards. There was a video going around of Amari Nyblack against the sled blocking, and he had to redo it three times because he's just not a good blocker. I know how this guy's going to be used. He's going to be used as like a decor, a decoy, sorry, or someone you split out wide and attack with if they have a linebacker or safety. Um, that's how you're going to use him. Gunner Helm's going to be the every down tight end. Like if there's one tight end on the field, it will be Gunner Helm, unless it's split out wide. That's the only scenario. But if you need that guy in at the end of the line of scrimmage and it's only one tight end, it's Gunner Helm. And I didn't even think Juan Davis, and we saw that. It was Juan Davis or Amari Nyblack on the opening depth chart. I wasn't shocked by that. The camp, the – Everything coming out of camp said that was happening. The only thing, honestly, that was iffy to me that didn't happen that I thought was going to happen is I thought Silas Bolton was going to get more involved because he's been bragged about ever since he got on campus. Everyone else that was bragged about got put in the game. Jalen Gilbo started at Nickelback. I said he was going to be the breakout player for Texas on defense. I said Gunnar Helm was going to be the breakout player on offense. Um, so I'm not surprised by that. I'm not surprised that Jade Barron sliding out to corner, and I think he'll play some reps at safety. I said that five months ago. There was no reason for him to come back if he just wanted to be a nickelback. He wanted to uh, show his versatility so he'd get drafted higher in the NFL. And then when I heard Silas Bolden, I thought, oh, we'll see more of him because guess what? Ryan Wingo, four receptions, 70 yards. We saw more of him than you would think of a freshman because we've been hearing about him, but you really didn't see much from Silas Bolden. So I'm interested to see if that was – if he was played up more than he is actually going to be involved in the offense, or is just a week one thing he's small, you don't want to get him hurt, you want to use him more to, going into the season. That will be interesting. Jane Blue gave me a scare, uh, guys, when he landed on his stomach, but it was pretty clear he just lost his win there, um, got the win knocked out of him, and that's the reason why uh, he came out of the game. But overall for him, 11 carries, 57 yards, good game for him. I was really impressed, guys, with Trey Weisner. Showed a lot of burst, um, showed a lot of vision, too, and acceleration through the hole when he did find it. He hit it really well. Jane Blue, honestly, looks like he gained a little bit too much weight to me. The explosiveness is not as much as I thought it was last year. I could be completely wrong on that. That's just a, I would love your guys' opinion on that. Uh, but to me, it did. It seemed like he lost a little bit of acceleration with the weight he did put on. 
But again, that could just be he's taking it easy. It's Colorado State. I don't know. We'll have to see versus Michigan. He still had the shiftiness. It was more of the acceleration in the burst. Uh, but he definitely did have the shiftiness to my eyes. Uh, 